please welcome him with some applause. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, as Micah pointed out, my, my main focus of research is, is, is the Makashkan, the 6th century Chinese Tendai text, and I, in maybe, many ways, would be more comfortable talking about that, but you would probably find it rather boring. So um, uh, this is another topic. It's a story which um, I uh, have a very personal interest in and uh, have followed uh, uh, and it's it's away from my academic uh, specialty, but um, something which um, I uh, pursued on a personal level, and that is uh, the figure of Takagi Kemyo. Um, the gist of what I'll be speaking is in the um, outline that um, has been printed. I won't read it, uh, just to say that uh, Takagi Kemyo is a Shinshu Otani uh, Pure Land Buddhist priest uh, who was arrested in 1910 as part of the the Taigyaku incident. Uh, Taigyaku means great treason, and uh, those of you uh, who know Japanese may think I'm mispronouncing it or that it should be Daigyaku, but when you have terms that are related with the emperor or Shinto, often they take out the nigori, so it's Taigyaku with the T is, is the correct uh, pronunciation. The Taigyaku incident, uh, which I'll explain more um, in uh, later, uh, was uh, uh, an incident in which the government uh, trumped up charges and tried to get rid of, well, not tried, they did, uh, got rid of many prominent socialists uh, uh, of the time by accusing them falsely uh, of uh, trying to, of a plot to assassinate the emperor. Um, Takagi himself died in prison of his own hand, um, but um, one thing we'll look at at the end of my talk is the essay he wrote, which is called My Socialism. So uh, the question uh, is, there are so many very interesting people in Japanese history and history in general. Why look at Takagi Kemyo, which was a rather minor figure in uh, uh, an incident which happened 100 years ago, just exactly 100 years ago, actually. Well, it's not 2011 anymore, it's 2012, <laughs> but... Um, but... Um, he's a very interesting figure, he's a minor figure, uh, only one of 24 who were arrested and executed. Uh, and a minor figure within that, but uh, one of uh, only two Buddhist priests uh, so he's a rare example of uh, Buddhist resistance to government militarism and imperialism uh, in the early 20th century. Uh, as we will see later, um, the general uh, approach uh, of the Buddhist uh, organizations in this period uh, were very patriotic and pro-government and pro-war. Um, the other very interesting aspect of this is that it's an early example of Buddhist-Christian cooperation. Uh, this is a period uh, in Meiji Japan when the Buddhism, for Buddhism, Christianity was a, was a very, um, was a threat. And the approach to Christianity among Buddhists uh, was uh, very much uh, uh, conf confrontational. Uh, uh, Christianity as part of the uh, increasing westernization of Japan was seen uh, not as something to cooperate and have dialogue with as uh, there is, it is, is today, but more something that you uh, criticize and fight against. Uh, but he became involved with a, a group of Christian uh, Christians at the Protestant church uh, near his temple uh, in which they uh, had a Friday evening uh, social uh, writing waka poems, which turned into later a, a study group on socialism. Uh, fourth uh, reason for looking at him, uh, which I don't have here, but um, uh, especially for giving this talk in the United States, is the recent um, kind of political discourse in the United States where it seems like socialism has become a dirty word. Uh, in which, you know, you, if you accuse someone of being a socialist, that's kind of like 
almost like attacking his mother or something. <laughs> uh, so uh, here's an example of someone who uh, attempted to uh, express his religious ideals uh, in terms of socialism. And um, uh, this may um, shed some light on, well, I don't know if it will shed light, but give another perspective to the idea of socialism than uh, what we find in the political discourse here in the United States. Um, just to give a couple more points of background, um, let me explain first uh, the, the Taigyaku incident, uh, just so that you, there's some uh, social background. Um, as is well known, the Meiji Constitution contained a clause which stated that the emperor was sacred and inviolable, and in order to back up such a claim, the government incorporated the crime of high treason, taigyakuzai, uh, into the criminal law in 1908, which held that anyone who harmed or attempted to harm the emperor or his family uh, would be put to death. Okay. It just so happened that in May 1910, some workers in a lumber mill in Nagano uh, were arrested for the illegal possession of explosives. In the course of interrogation, it was discovered that they had been planning to assassinate the emperor. And because of this, they were tried for the above crime. Uh, Yamagata Arimoto, who held the uh, reins of government in those days, decided to use this opportunity to eradicate socialists and anarchists whose influence had been growing in Japanese society. Uh, the prosecution concocted a story about their plotting to assassinate the emperor with a prominent socialist, Kotoku Shusui. Uh, and this is a name that will come up many times uh, in this talk. In fact, he's the main person that the government wanted to get and he was a very prominent uh, socialist and editor of the Heimin Shinbun. Uh, so Kotoku Shusui, uh, and he was uh, trumped up to be the ringleader of this supposed plot to assassinate the emperor. Uh, this government fabrication became known as the High Treason Incident or the Taigyaku Jiken, uh, in which Takagi Kemyo was implicated. Okay, so, um, also to give some uh, geographical context to what we're talking about here. Um, uh, as you know, uh, in Japan here, this is the kind of corridor of power uh, where half of the people uh, in Japan live. Uh, here is Nagoya, where Takagi Kemyo was born and where I currently live and work. Um, as, as many of you know, uh, this is the corridor which the Shinkansen runs. You can get a train at Nagoya and be in Tokyo 250 kilometers away in less than two hours. The trains leave every 10 minutes. Uh, however, uh, down here is the Kumano area, which in Takagi's time, as well as through most of Japanese history, was uh, Hekichi, a, um, what does he call it? Um, the the out, uh, outbacks, maybe, <laughs> you know, away from the main uh, uh, center of action, as it were. Even today, it takes uh, three hours by um, uh, express train to get down to this area. So this is the Kumano area. Uh, Shingu, Hongu, Nachi are the three Kumano shrines. Uh, a very beautiful area. Just a few years ago, it was uh, uh, listed as a World Heritage Site. Um, down here is Taichi, uh, which includes the cove where there's the annual slaughter of the dolphins. Have any of you seen the, uh, the, the um, what is it, documentary, The Cove, which won the Academy Award last year, right? The cove where they slaughter the dolphins is down here, so. It's a beautiful area, but it's not all beautiful landscape and <laughs> wonderful traditions. Um, and here, between Miyaken and Wakayama, is the city of Shingu. Okay. Uh, so this is the Komano River. Uh, Takagi Kemyo's temple, very small temple, was about 
in this area, in the background later, you'll see the uh, mountains at the west of the Shingu City. The uh, clinic of a Dr. Uh, Onishi Seinosuke, who was one of the uh, leaders of the socialist group in Shingu, was in this area. I'll talk about him more later. The Protestant church in which Takagi became involved in, in uh, socialism and discussions uh, was around in this area. Um, I grew up in this area. Um, I was born in Japan. And my father, my parents uh, were missionaries, and they came to Shingu in 1952 uh, when I was still a baby, I don't remember. And because of the Protestant church was already there, uh, they decided to uh, do their church work uh, across the river. So this is a personal connection I have with this story. Um, so I was there from 1952 tells you how old I am. <laughs> okay, Takagi Kemyo. He was born in Nagoya in 1864 in the city of Kasugai, which as I pointed out earlier is where I live now. So this is another end that, uh, connection that I have with Takagi. Uh, he was originally named Yamada Tsumasaburo, and in 1882, when he was 18 years old, he became married to a woman named Tajima Kyo, and around that time, he was studying to be a school teacher, but he, instead of becoming a school teacher, he chose to be a Shinshu priest. Uh, four years later, sadly, his wife, Kyo, passes away, and he becomes a widower. Um, in 1893, after working as a um, uh, helper uh, at a temple in Nagoya called Doninji, uh, he's adopted by the Takagi family. Uh, this is not unusual in Japan, uh, where, where a Buddhist priest will... Uh, uh, adopt uh, someone to take over the temple or to become a Buddhist priest. Um, and at that time, uh, he takes the name uh, Takagi and also the uh, religious name of Kemyo. Uh, in 1994, he gives a lecture uh, called, which is one of only two things which he has published, the other is being my socialism. He gave a rather kind of Mm, not very well prepared lecture <laughs> from the content uh, of why Nichiren Buddhism is not, uh, why Nichiren Shu is not Buddhist, kind of like, um, I suppose, someone, uh, you know, why Mormonism is not Christian or something. <laughs> um, and uh, as I said, uh, it's not a very well thought out uh, lecture. It shows more youthful passion than than um, than a real good grasp of what Nichiren uh, Buddhism is about. But what's interesting is is that in this talk he starts with a bonsai for the emperor in Buddhism, kind of like if we would have started this talk today with singing the national anthem, I suppose. Um, but you see, in his in this talk, he's still very a very patriotic, uh, very uh, much. Uh, 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 reflecting uh, the official uh, attitudes and uh, of the uh, Buddhism of the time. Uh, and we'll see that uh, he backs away from this sort of uh, approach uh, later in his life. Uh, it was at this time uh, that there was a Sino-Japanese war and gradually you find uh, more and more the militarization and the uh, pressure for uh, patriotic approval of this, uh, not only in Japanese society in general, but also among Buddhist uh, organizations. Uh, in 1895, for example, Otaniha temples were all instructed to conduct memorial services uh, for the war dead and uh, to promote the war effort. In 1997, uh, he 
begins to help out as a priest in a temple called Josenji, uh, which is a small temple in Shingu, Wakayama. And it, this is, uh, I'll show some pictures of it later, but it's a very small uh, Jodo Shinshu uh, temple. Um, as many of you know, uh, Jodo Shinshu is the biggest uh, organization, Buddhist organization in Japan. Uh, they have temples uh, around the country and in many places they're the dominant uh, school. But in this, in the Kumano area, uh, for some reason, um, Josenji is the only uh, Jodo Shinshu temple within 100 kilometers. Most of the temples are Rinzai or Shingon. And another uh, thing that's uh, special about Josenji is that um, uh, how can I say this? Um, uh, 120 out of the 180 uh, danka or the uh, family uh, supporters of the temple were part of the buraku. Okay, buraku means village, but in the Japanese context, buraku means the area where the discriminated people were living. Uh, and there's still discrimination in Japan against uh, the so-called buraku min. Um, but uh, the discrimination was even stronger in those days. Uh, and the fact that they were Buraku people meant that they had very little economic power. Uh, they were uh, social and economic outcasts. And so uh, 180 Danka is not a small number of people to support a temple, but with 120 of them being uh, Buraku families, uh, it was a very poor temple. And uh, Takagi had to support the temple uh, by, be, by working as a masseur. Um, I, uh, I, I hesitate to even say it, but uh, in Shingu, the temple was known as the Etadera, which is a word that you don't say in polite company <laughs> in Japan. Uh, so uh, it was a very um, distinct uh, uni uh, temple, uh, and uh, it was in this context that uh, Takaki himself became socially radicalized, well radicalized, or became aware of uh, discrimination and in Japanese society and began his uh, activities uh, to counter the uh, discrimination. Also, in 19, 1898, he begins living with a woman named Kenda Tashi. You remember his wife died um, previously. And this is, this is curious. I've, I've, I, um, as you all know, Japanese temples, it's, it's assumed that Japanese priests marry and have a family. Um, here's a case where he's living with a woman without officially marrying her, and yet there's no, I've never found any thing where this was criticized as being, you know, untoward or, you know, and eventually uh, he registers uh, her name as his uh, legally married wife, but it wasn't uh, only until five or six years later. Um, but he's working at Josenji, uh, and in 1899 he becomes the Jushoku, the main priest at Josenji, and uh, comes in contact with victims of discrimination. And it's around this time that he becomes acquainted with a man named Dr. Onishi Seinosuke. Uh, his, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, nickname was Doktoru, which in Japanese means to extract poison, but is a play on doctor, right? He was Doktoru Onishi, uh, a very famous um, doctor, medical doctor, and social activist in Japan. He was one of the first people to study abroad in the United States and India. And in India, he came across the problem of, of the caste system and became uh, very uh, sensitive to issues of social discrimination. He came back to Japan. He set up a medical clinic in Shingu. Um, and he was famous for uh, treating poor, if, if people couldn't pay for the treatment, he wouldn't take money from them, and he would charge more uh, to the rich uh, people in order to make it all work, kind of like the American medical system today. Um, but uh, some people say that he's 
the or one of the models for Kurosawa's uh, movie uh, Akahige, Redbeard. Have you seen that movie? Um, it's not one of Kurosawa's. Well, it's one of Kurosawa's famous movies, about the same time as um, Seven Samurai. Uh, but it's about a doctor who works among the poor and doesn't um, uh, charge for his uh, medical services. Anyway, um, uh, Takagi becomes acquainted with uh, Oishi Seinosuke, also Okino Yoasaburo, who is the pastor of the Shingu Church, and uh, a couple of leftist journalisms, uh, journalists. And they began uh, meeting every Friday. Uh, they had a uh, group called the Kinyokai, uh, the Thank God It's Friday Club, I guess, um, where they would uh, write waka, right? And this uh, Kinyokai eventually uh, evolved into uh, another um, a group, uh, the, the, I think the Koshinkai or something like that, in which they would study and share ideas uh, about how to work against uh, discrimination and to promote socialism. Okay, here's the uh, a, a shot of the current uh, Josenji you see here in the background, uh, and the mountain in the back. Um, here's a, as you can see, it's a very small temple. Um, compared to the very large uh, uh, temples that usually uh, get attention. It's um, still a very small temple. This was rebuilt after the war, so it's not the temple that uh, Takaki himself worked at. The temple in Takagi's time, uh, here's a picture of that, was even smaller and a very kind of ramshackle type of temple. Here we have a picture of, here's Takagi, uh, here's uh, Dr. Oishi and a couple of the other uh, people that uh, they uh, hung out with. So uh, Takagi is working at a small temple in Shingu and gradually he becomes radicalized. Uh, in eight, 1984, uh, we find uh, is the beginning of the Russo-Japanese War uh, and Instead of um, taking a very pro-government and pro-war stand, which he did uh, a few years before, he writes, uh, he, he refuses to uh, uh, do memorial services uh, for the war effort, and he composes an essay uh, entitled My Socialism, which we will look at uh, later. Uh, in 1905, uh, he, there is the establishment of a legal brothel in Shingu, and Takagi uh, tries to stop it. Uh, he didn't succeed, and the brothel goes into business. Um, it's said that um, he, in, um, uh, he would get up early in the morning and go uh, to the street in front of the brothel, and look at who's coming out and write down their names and give it to the newspaper. Um, so this is not a great way to make friends, but uh, uh, anyway, he, he was active in opposing uh, this. And um, they say, uh, it seems that one reason for this is that many of the uh, people who uh, worked in the brothel were from uh, the area, uh, the Buraku area, uh, which uh, uh, his parishioners were from uh, because of economic uh, difficulties. Um, let's see. It's not here, but in 1904, uh, Yoshi, uh, Yosano Akiko uh, publishes her uh, short story on Ototo. Uh, Yosano Akiko is very famous, probably the most famous uh, woman author of the time. And she comes to Shingu a couple times. She was a good friend of uh, Dr. Onishi. And uh, or, uh, it seems that uh, Takagi Kemyo kind of had a crush on Yosano Akiko. And when a couple, during one of my visits to uh, Josenji and Shingu, uh, we went through some uh, personal papers that are still in the warehouse there, and the Jushoku showed me a collection of uh, poems, waka, uh, that Takagi had written, uh, kind of love poems, actually. 
uh, to Yosano Akiko. Uh, at the time, he was living with this, this other woman. But uh, anyway, he had a crush on Yosano Akiko, and there were a number of uh, private papers which uh, show uh, his interest in this. It's very, uh, I, I found it a very endearing part of, of his personality where, uh, you know, he, he shows a kind of uh, a very sensitive side. Um, the uh, Kinyo no Kai for writing waka uh, gradually evolves into the uh, Kyoshin Kai, uh, whose purpose is to uh, discuss uh, ways to oppose discrimination. And it seems that what happened, what really got Takagi involved in, in, in uh, working against discrimination was that uh, there was a time, the Shingu church, that uh, needed to have its roof repaired. And they hired people from the Buraku to do the uh, new roofing. And there was a huge uh, outcry among other people, other aspects of society, saying, how can you hire these people to, to work on your church? And they kind of fought back uh, against uh, this uh, criticism. And this was part of, uh, and then uh, Takagi becoming much more uh, closely involved with the activities of the Christian church. Okay, in 1907, uh, Takagi becomes legally married to Tashi. Um, and he adopts a young uh, uh, baby girl named Kayoko, uh, who was born uh, illegitimately uh, from, by one of his parishioners. And um, she, uh, so the story of Kayoko becomes a very interesting part of this, this story. I wish I had uh, time to go into it. I won't uh, be able to go into the details, but Kayoko is, is um, uh, adopted uh, by Takagi. Uh, he becomes married legally to Tashi, probably in order to give uh, Kayoko uh, legal standing uh, so that she can enter elementary school. Um, unfortunately, after Takagi is uh, arrested and taken to prison, uh, Tashi and Kayako are thrown out of the temple and have to move back to Nagoya where Tashi lives with her sister and a very extreme uh, economically trying times. Eventually uh, Kayako is sold as a geisha to work uh, in the uh, o uh, Osu Hachima, or the Osu Kanon district of Nagoya. Uh, and uh, Kayako eventually um, uh, converts to Tendikyo and becomes a very prominent and famous Tendikyo uh, preacher. So this is a kind of an interesting twist in the, in the story. And she becomes responsible for uh, setting up a grave for Takagi Kemyo after he commits suicide and then eventually moving it from Hamamatsu back to Shingu. Okay. In 1909, uh, Koto Kushusui, who I mentioned earlier, uh, the editor of Heimin Shimbun, and uh, uh, as part of uh, one of his um, uh, tours, uh, lecture tours around Japan, uh, he visits Shingu and gives a talk at Josenji. And also, he, he catches a cold uh, and he spends a week at uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Oishi's uh, clinic. And uh, so they become very, well, they were acquainted from before. But, and it's this kind of, it's this uh, incident actually, which the government uses uh, as the basis for saying that there's a plot to assassinate the emperor. They say that at, at this time, uh, the people involved uh, discussed uh, uh, assassinating the emperor. And uh, especially uh, when Kotoku became well, uh, at the end of uh, his week's stay, uh, they had a going away party uh, at the uh, uh, side of the Kumano River. And the people who were attended that going away party became the list of people who were uh, arrested uh, at the Daikyaku uh, incident. Uh, 
Um, here's a picture of um, the usual suspects. Uh, here's Takagi Kemyo. This is Dr. Uh, Oishi. Uh, this is a Mineo Setsudo. He is the, a Shingon priest, and he was the only other uh, Buddhist priest who was uh, uh, arrested. Uh, but he's part of the group, and Nimura uh, is a uh, journalist. And it's a very interesting picture because you see here, uh, Takagi is a very small man, and you know, Dr. Oishi kind of exudes charisma. He's a strong personality, right? But Takagi is kind of, uh, uh, he looks kind of, I don't want to use the word wimpish, but you know, <laughs> um, he's not the type to kind of stand out and uh, stand on a podium and, and, force, and be a forceful speaker. Um, So, 1910, we get to the Taigyaku incident. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, uh, two men, Miyashita and Nimura, uh, in Nagano Prefecture, were, were arrested uh, for possessing explosives, and it seems that, yes, they, they had, in fact, uh, discussed the possibility of uh, trying to assassinate the emperor. However, um, this was a plot only among Miyashita and Nimura. The government jumped on this uh, incident and used it uh, to make a list of socialists uh, which they wanted to get rid of and uh, tr made trumped up charges against them also of uh, attempting to uh, assassinate the emperor. In June of this year, Kotoku Shusui was arrested. Uh, later on, Oishi and Takagi and a group of six people that I mentioned earlier, the people who uh, met with Kotoku uh, when his uh, when he was in Shingu uh, are also arrested uh, toward the end of the year. Uh, I think it was November. Now, what happens after this is is interesting. Um, rather than come to uh, Takagi's defense, uh, the Shinshu Otaniha uh, immediately uh, stripped Takagi of his ordination. Uh, even before the trial was over, uh, they um, assumed that he was guilty uh, and did nothing to support him. Uh, in January of 1911, only two months after uh, they were arrested, all 24 of these conspirators were found guilty uh, and sentenced to death. Uh, let, only one week later, 12 of them uh, including Takagi, received reduced sentences of life imprisonment. And this was announced as because of the compassion of the emperor, their uh, uh, sentences were reduced. And then again, one week later, at the end of January in 1911, uh, 12 people, including Kotoku and Oishi, uh, were executed. And at this point, again, not just uh, stripping uh, Takagi of his ordination, uh, but Takagi was excommunicated by the Shinshu Otaniha. Um, he was charged with hinseki, which is the most severe uh, punishment that the organization could give. Uh, not only that, uh, the Otaniha immediately sent out a letter uh, to all the temples in Japan uh, displaying their displeasure with Takagi and saying that uh, not only among the Shinshu priests, but also the parishioners, uh, may it be that the, such a person never appears among our ranks again, and if there is, please report it to the headquarters so that we can do something about it. Uh, the fallout from the Taiyaku incident, 1911, the Takagi family was driven away from Josenji. Uh, eventually, the daughter Kayoko was sold as a geisha. In 1914, uh, Takagi, who still had a uh, life imprisonment, was transferred to Akita Prison, uh, which is in northern Japan, as you know. And Takagi was known to be Sasamugariya, someone who um, was, what do you call it? Uh, not, not very good dealing with the cold, right? Always being, so going to Akita was a very, uh, uh, not very comfortable. Um, 
And uh, there were two uh, pardons uh, in this period, uh, when the Emperor Meiji died and when the Emperor Taisho uh, became enthroned. Uh, there were general pardons and many uh, people were, uh, got received reduced sentences or were released from prison. But Tagaki himself, uh, he hoped to get a, a pardon, uh, but his, life, uh, his sentence of life imprisonment uh, was left as it is. And it's spe although we no don't know for sure, uh, the speculation is that uh, the fact that he received no uh, pardon, uh, he saw no end to his uh, misery in prison. Uh, his wife and daughter uh, were driven away. Uh, he had lost his uh, ordination and excommunicated by his uh, re religious organization despite his what he could see as he had not done anything wrong, but rather tried to live up to the ideals. Um, one can easily imagine that he uh, became, uh, he lost uh, to his despair. And he, in the spring of 1914, uh, he took his own life. In uh, 1923, Tashi passes away in Nagoya. 1936, Kayoko meets her biological mother and converts to Tendikyo. In 1962, Kayoko sets up a gravestone for the Takagi family in Hamamatsu, and in 1972, Kayoko passes away. Okay, um, after the war, as all of you know, um, Buddhism does an about turn, uh, immediately, not immediately, but um, takes on uh, the anti-war and pacifist stand. However, it takes quite a while before uh, Takagi himself is rehabilitated. It wasn't until 1996 uh, that the Shinshu Otaniha restores Takagi's organization and he re uh, revokes the excommunication. In 1997, there's a memorial set up at the Shingu graveyard uh, where Takagi's grave had been uh, shifted from Hamamatsu. And in 1998, uh, the f it was the first of the annual memorial services in honor of Takagi at Josenji. And this is very interesting because I haven't attended it, but um, I talked to the Jushoku about it. And every year they have a memorial service for Takagi. And as part of the memorial service, they read his essay on my socialism, which is ra rather short. But so you can see where this essay by Takagi is kind of taking its first tentative steps toward becoming a kind of a canonical text. Um, as you may know, Buddhism has an open canon. Um, it's kind of unthinkable that, you know, in the Christian tradition or Islamic tradition that anything would be added to the Quran or the Bible, but the Buddhist canon is an open canon. And it's not unthinkable that eventually Takagi's essay will be uh, included among uh, scripture. Um, his uh, gravestone has moved from Hamamatsu to Shingu. And in 2003, there's a memorial set up near Shingu train station in honor of the six victims of the Taigaku incident. Uh, this is the memorial that was set up by Takagi's uh, graveyard. This is the, not a very good picture. Here's the little grave, of Takagi's grave, and the uh, stone uh, explaining his position. This is the uh, memorial set up by Shingu station which lists the six people. And it's interesting, this is kind of an aside, um, I don't know why, but um, I mean Takagi has been reaccepted back into Shinku society and his gravestone moved here. But there's still a residual resentment against Dr. Oishi. And I don't know why. Um, I, I was talking to um, uh, one of the members of the Shingu city office, and he said um, it hasn't been allowed yet that Oishi's grave be moved back to Shingu. I don't know, someone else can uh, follow up on that maybe. Okay, in the time we have left, um, I'd like to take a look at the uh, essay by Takaki. As I said, it's quite short. Um, let's see, where am I? In 
and it's quite short. And um, it's actually, if you look at the content, it's more about his religious faith than a political statement. Um, it starts out by saying, my socialism does not derive from that of Karl Marx, nor does it follow from Tolstoy's pacifism. Uh, Tolstoy's work was quite popular during this time. And in fact, this my socialism reads quite a, a lot like uh, Tolstoy's essay, My Religion. But um, anyway, he says, I do not seek to interpret it scientifically and propagate it throughout the world, but I have a faith that is mine alone. And he points out, I do not feel that socialism is a theory, but rather a kind of practice. I consider socialism to be related much more deeply to religion than to politics. In proceeding to reform society, we have to, first of all, begin from our own spirituality. Uh, so to him, socialism uh, is a practice of equality and non-discrimination. And this principle for him derives from uh, his Buddhist faith, uh, especially his faith in Amida. Uh, the object of, uh, let's see, it's in two parts, uh, the object of faith and the content of faith. First of all, he talks about uh, his uh, Shinshu uh, uh, Buddhas. Um, he says, first of all, the doctrine uh, on which his socialism is based is Namo Amidabutsu, or honor, or I believe in Amidabutsu, which is the voice calling on us not to worry because the transcendental being of universal good called Amida Buddha uh, will save us. Uh, this is very traditional, kind of classic uh, Shinshu theology. Um, and then he goes on to say, uh, to point out uh, how appalled he is uh, that this religious ideal is being used to support uh, the war effort. And he points out, um, he talks about Nanjo Bunyu. Um, Nanjo Bunyu uh, is a very, one of the top Buddhologists of his time. Uh, he was a professor at Tokyo University. He was one of the first Japanese to go to Europe to study Sanskrit under Max Muller. Uh, and was, um, well, his catalog of Buddhist texts, for example, the Nanjo catalog, is a bit outdated, but still uh, considered a classic in its field. So here we have this, um, one of the top uh, Buddhist scholars in Japan who went on a tour uh, to whip up support uh, for, the, uh, for the war effort. And his rallying call was, Shinudu wa gokuraku yatsukero, which is, you know, if you die, you'll go to the Pure Land, so attack the and, and kill the enemy. Um, I mean, we've seen this sentiment in many religious traditions. It's kind of sad to see it uh, here also uh, in the Buddhist context. Um, but uh, Takagi points out how uh, sad it is that uh, the uh, faith in Amida Butsu, which is supposed to uh, promote the equality of all people uh, is being used uh, to promote uh, war and killing. Uh, he then goes on to talk about the object of his faith, the teachers, uh, Shakyamuni, uh, people like uh, Dengyo, Kobo, Honen, Shindani, Kyurin, Renyo, these are all uh, top uh, figures in the history of Japanese Buddhism. And he says, I declare Buddhism to be the mother of the common people and the enemy of the nobility. So this is kind of very socialist. Um, it says, I consider the Pure Land to be the place in which socialism is truly practiced. Uh, we have never heard that beings in the land of bliss have attacked other lands, nor have we ever heard that they have started a great war for the sake of justice. I do not feel that a person of the land of bliss should take part in warfare. Okay. Um, then he, uh, he talks about the content of his faith. Uh, when we come to seek the ideal world upon receiving instruction from teachers like Shakyamuni and reflect deeply within our minds by hearing the voice of the Savior Amida calling to us, we then gain peace of mind, feel great joy, and become vigorous in spirit. You can see why uh, Pure Land Buddhism is often compared to um, the uh, Lutheranism in, in Christianity. Uh, and then he goes on, the common people in general are sacrificed for the fame, peerage, and medals of one small group of people. It is a society in which the common people in general must suffer for the sake of a small number of speculators. 
Are not the people treated like animals at the hands of the wealthy? There are people who cry out in hunger. There are women who sell their honor out of poverty. There are children who are soaked by the rain. It kind of reminds you of the Occupy Wall Street moment, right? Um, finally, um, he gets uh, to practical action. He says, the only thing I wish to accomplish through my great energy and human labor is progress, kojo shimpo, and community life. He says, we cannot help but lament when we hear that religious functionaries are praying to gods and Buddhas for victory. Cease taking pleasure in victory and shouting bonsai. This is because Namo Amida Butsu is the voice that leads everyone to sal equally to salvation. We must proceed from the spiritual realm and completely change the social system from the ground up. And this is what socialism means. And this is what he was arrested and imprisoned for. In closing, uh, Takagi quotes uh, a passage from Shindan, uh, which was being used by the, uh, um, by the Shinshu organization to prove that Shindan supported uh, the emperor system and such. It's very difficult to find writings in Shindan uh, which support uh, uh, the emperor system because generally he was negative. But there was there is a, a section which uh, the Otani Shinshu uh, people were using uh, as a proof text, as it were, uh, to encourage people to uh, support the imperial uh, government. Uh, the quote from Shindan is, in the final analysis, it would be splendid if all people who say the Nembutsu, uh, not just yourself, do so not with thoughts of themselves, but for the sake of the imperial court and for the sake of the people of the country. And uh, Takagi's comment uh, on this is that, alas, this is an example of an old adage that fear makes us see monsters in the dark. All the passage above is a gospel for peace. Have people mistaken it for the sound of a bugle commanding us to attack the enemy? And this is, again, very interesting. He uses the word gospel, fukuing. Uh, this is not a Buddhist term. This is a Christian term. <laughs> you never find this in the Buddhist text. Uh, fukuing is, is the standard uh, Japanese for the, 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 the good news, uh, the, the gospel in Christianity. But the fact that he uses the word fukuin here in this context is very interesting. It shows, uh, I don't know if he deliberately used it to show that his, his uh, ideas were uh, going beyond Buddhism or just it was a word that was being used in the, in the, in the context of his, of his friends at the, at the church. But um, it's very striking here. We have a very Buddhist text in which we have all of a sudden uh, a very specifically Christian term. Okay, it's just one o'clock. Um, if I may take a few more minutes just to make some closing comments. Um, Takagi, as we see, is, is really an ordinary person. He's not the type of kind of bigger than life, heroic, um, uh, bigger than life, heroic person, but rather he's just an ordinary person caught up uh, in the currents of the times. Uh, he's has an idealistic and almost naive simple faith and a hope for equality, uh, which to him uh, obviously uh, was based on, on what he took to be the meaning of his uh, religious experience and the, uh, the, the ideals uh, of the Shinshu uh, tradition. Um, well, sa and sad to say, um, instead, they, they led to his uh, arrest and death. And finally, it's ironic that his anti-discrimination and anti-war stance uh, is now mainstream. Uh, not just Shinshu Otani, but all the Buddhist schools, well, almost all the Buddhist schools in Japan, at least officially, the two pillars of their social teaching is anti-war and anti-discrimination. Uh, and so what at Takagi's time, he was a misfit uh, and completely out of tune with the stand of his religious organization. Now, a hundred years later, uh, Takagi's stance is, is the official stance of, of the uh, Buddhist organization. And if I might 
uh, finally close with just one comment. I, Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I sometimes wonder um, if, if Takagi ever realized that, um, well, you know, in prison and in and, and despair, uh, he probably felt that everything that he had done or stand for uh, had been taken away. And I sometimes wonder, did he ever imagine that 100 years later, half the way around the world, uh, we'd be talking about his life and his work. And I think probably not. And that's part of the tragedy of his life. Um, it would be a much better story if he had survived prison and lived on to write some more inspirational and kind of developed his ideas further. Uh, but this isn't a Hollywood movie. It's not a really even a, it's not even a, a hero story. He, well, he's, he's a hero now because the Buddhist establishment has come around uh, to his ideas, um, but he died in despair, uh, probably thinking that uh, everything that he had lived for uh, was gone and, and meaningless. Uh, and in that sense, he's a, he's a tragic hero, if he's a hero at all. So thank you. Thank you.